Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. In the last Tips and Tricks, I show you how to use one of the 3ds Max Design sample file, which has a basic studio lighting setup, and render this with your inventor model using Mental Ray. Now we're going to switch this scene into an iRay rendering scene. In the last Tips and Tricks, I show you how to merge your inventor model from a previous 3ds Max Design scene into a sample file scene, which was set up to render with Mental Ray. Now, mental ray rendering is great, but if you don't want to fiddle with the mental ray rendering setting, it might be a good idea to switch to iRay, and the only thing you need to do is let it render until you're satisfied with the result. Now, if you have the proper graphic card, that render could be quick, and you have awesome results. So I'm basically starting where I left off, and within the rendering panel, I'm going to switch to the iRay rendering engine. Now I'm going to go under the renderer panel and choose to render this image for unlimited time, which is basically the only setting you need to worry about when you're rendering with iRay. Now notice that I'm getting some render message warning from the iRay rendering engine telling me that some of the setup of this scene are not supported by iRay. So we're not going to panic for now. These are very simple to change and fix, and I'm going to show you how. Now, the other thing that I'm noticing is that there's this bright pink lighting that's coming from the back of the car. And that's mostly due to the car having self-illuminated material, which creates a backlit situation, which is reflected by the background. So basically, um, iRay is a lot more sensitive to light and calculates the light a lot more accurately than Mentory. And therefore, this image is being affected differently. So because I am aware these backlights have self-illuminated material, I can choose to decrease the intensity of the light or turn off the self-illuminated material to fix this uh, backlighting uh, pinkish uh, light that's happening behind my model. But if I like this, I can leave it there. Um, I'm going to change it um, later on in the scene to show you how to do it and really have a comparison in between the mental ray image and the eye ray image. So I'm going to cancel this render for now and investigate a little bit more on this scene. So if I look back at the first render I did with Mental Ray, you see that there's various materials that were created with this scene. And what the warning is telling me is that there's a max composite material that is not supported by iRay. So I'm going to load the material editor. And right now, none of the material that are in the scene are loaded in the browser. I can easily do that by clicking on the material map browser. And I'm going to collapse all of these panels until until I see the scene material and I'm going to load a few of these materials. So 01 default, I know that doesn't belong to the three wheeler as well as 02 default and 15 default material. If I scroll down, uh, I'm going to find the uh, grungy floor material, which I am assuming is belonging to the floor of the studio. And scrolling back up, I can see as well that there's a ceiling material here, which I'm assuming also belongs to the studio. So I know that the material that are applied on the three wheeler have been corrected by me in a previous scene. So I know that my three wheeler is fine. Now I just have to investigate a little bit more on these material that are applied in the studio because they weren't created by me. So looking at the 01 default material, I could see it's an arch and design material, which confirms that it is supported by iRay. None of the material or the bump map are using anything that is not supported by iRay. So this one seems okay. I'm going to move to the second material. Nothing look unusual in this material either. The third material is using an arch and design material, but there's a map here in the diffuse channel. And this is the composite map that is not supported by iRay. So I'm basically going to get rid of this material. This is a concrete floor. It's called grungy floor, but to me, it looked like a concrete floor. So I'm going to basically load an arch and design material. So I'm going to start from fresh and I'm going to use a template polish concrete, which I know looks really good with iRay and is supported by iRay. And now I have solved my problem with the material warning that iRay was giving me. Now I'm going to look at the ceiling material. It's an arch and design material. I should be fine for the rest. So if I go ahead and re-render, you will notice that um, I'm not going to get the warning message anymore. And basically I'm going to be okay uh, with the rendering now. 
Now that the rendering is going, I can see that the pinkish light is still happening in the background and I might like this effect. If I don't like it, that means I need to turn off the self-illuminated material that are applied on the back light of the three-wheeler. And let's do that to have an equal comparison between the two rendering. So first I'm going to change my angle here. I'm going to look at the back of my three-wheeler turn around and basically call this a uh, self illuminated material into my material editor by using the picker. And if I scroll down, this is an Autodesk generic material. And you see here under the self illuminated uh, section, you could see that it's active. So I'm basically going to uncheck that. So it's going to be not self illuminated anymore. And this little red light here is using the same material than the other lights that I just load. So I should be okay from now on. So going back to my camera view, I'm going to render again. And you'll see that this pink, pinkish light in my render is is now gone because I have turned the self eliminated material off. So basically I only have a few small adjustments to do, mainly uh, to do with the material that was not supported by IRA and shutting down that self eliminated material that was glowing in the background. And now I have a comparable image render with IRA with no rendering settings to adjust. Basically, I just have to let this image render for as long as I want. And I find that for this particular scene, it was actually faster to render with IRA to get a nicer uh, quality render than to render the same scene in mental ray. So already you see that it's only been a few minutes and the quality is quite nice and I have soft shadows, soft reflection and a beautiful photorealistic quality using iRay rendering.